All right, welcome into Gridiron Icon this week. I am joined by my partner in crime, number 88, Mr. Preston Denard. How are we, sir? I'm doing quite well, my friend. Um, recuperating. Uh, when I say recuperating, working out the old body and, uh, you know, been dealing with a little bit of uh, lower back issues. But, hey, I'm, I'm back into it. And, uh, you know, at, at our age, right, Stace, we just got to deal with it, right? <laughs> Roll and deal with it. <laughs> Listen, I got no excuse. I woke up with a bad back this morning. True story. Ooh. But I think yours might have something to do with laying out for the ball all those times uh, that you became famous for. I think you're starting to feel it now well, in your 60s. Most definitely feeling it. And uh, let it be known, we all feel it once we go through that cycle. <laughs> I'll bet. But you made the catch. Also, let it be made known that he did make the catch, ladies and gentlemen. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good to see you, my man. A lot has happened since we were together last. And uh, I think first and foremost, we'll talk a little bit about free agency, but we've got to start with number 99 in Los Angeles yeah. as someone that, I mean, you played against absolute iconic legends in Mean Joe Green and so many other big names. But number 99, Aaron Donald of the Los Angeles Rams calls it a career mm -hmm. after 10 years. And I've got to ask you, Smart, is he leaving something in the tank? What do you think about this whole retirement of number 99? Well, first of all, kudos to him. <laughs> because that's where I'm going. Excellent, excellent journey. It is the ideal way that an athlete would like to pursue a career and then end a career. Walk away, take your riches, whatever that might be take your experience, all your accomplishments, and transition into the life that is truly representative of all the effort you put in. I think it's an outstanding uh, uh, journey. It's, it's exactly what all the athletes kind of desire and dream of. We don't all get that opportunity. Some of us are released and cut. Some of us uh, reach half of our potential and dreams. And then there's a lot of unfinished business. Well, it's always unfinished business with athletes who fall short of their desired journey, but we have to be smart. And I contend to Aaron Donald was very smart about his calculated decision. He has a beautiful young family still. And so he gets to do it the way he does it. And we used to always have a phrase, Stacy, don't let it be you. And that was the ugly side of things, but we certainly want this to be us and to have that opportunity. And not all of us are afforded that. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, it is really special. I think that all of us have witnessed a career that will never be matched. Mm -hmm. I, especially, I mean, Preston, from the interior of the defensive line, now granted they moved him around a bit towards the end there under Raheem Morris, but mm -hmm. Aaron Donald put up 111 sacks as a defensive tackle. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's insane. And, and to see all of his peers coming out over the last couple of weeks uh, or the last week, I guess, or better, and saying, look, he was the GOAT of our generation. There, there were several people who said he was the flat out best player in the NFL, a defensive tackle. When has that ever been said before? Like ever, even well, in the mean Joe Green era, like yeah, there was yeah. other players. Right? Well, if you think if you think about the mean Joe Greens and the Jack Youngbloods and and those kind of guys, and you think about the old Philadelphia Eagles D-line, and you even think about Reggie White, the next closest athlete, I think, to Aaron Donald was probably Reggie White as far as interior alignment because yeah. Aaron is an athlete at that position. And so he redefined what they thought was Reggie White's definition of that position, and he redefined it, and he did such a great job with it, combining the athletic skill that he has – because he's not that typical guy. He's not even the typical defensive line height of, yeah. of a ball player. So you know that's a tremendous athlete that the Rams had. And thank God they got the number of years they got out of him uh, before he was able to, to hang it up. Because, you know, ideally, winning the Super Bowl, that was a great opportunity for him to ride out in the sunset and do it beautiful. But he came back. He still played at the top level. And now he leaves on his own accord. It's incredible. And I mean, he did what he did on the largest stages, mm -hmm. the biggest stages, the the play, the walk-off play in the Super Bowl mm -hmm. against the Cincinnati Bengals will live forever in legend. 
But people seem to forget he also made the play right before that play that stopped the running back from a yep. first down in the Super yep. Bowl to get to that play. They yep. also seem to forget he made the play on a quarterback sack of Jeremy, Jimmy Garoppolo to yep. end the yep. NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. A defensive tackle that showed up in the biggest moments on the biggest stages. Absolutely blessed to have yep. watched this guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a party of three now. If you're going to go Mount Rushmore, and boy, is it tough. Uh, eh, let's go four. Got to go four. Um, it's Aaron Donald. It's Reggie White. It's Lawrence Taylor. It's Deacon Jones. And mm-hmm. and man, you could argue Jack Youngblood. You could argue Richard Dent. I mean, you played against some of these guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was there ever a fear factor with some of those guys during your era that Aaron – much like what Aaron Donald. Well, those guys were all interior. They were inside that box. So I never was in the box to be concerned <laughs> about it. But do you know what? You could stretch that whole identification of some great GOAT athletes. That's why I always, my claim is there's not a GOAT. I mean, you start going down that alley, you start coming up with the Leroy Selmans uh, and Ooh. guys like that. Uh, yeah, you could just keep going. But the bottom line is Aaron is that echelon of a top athlete in the position he played. And certainly he ranks among the great ones that played years before in their time, they were outstanding athletes too. But again, I go back to say it's redefined. I mean, he really just, oh my gosh, you would want an athlete like that on the table. And, and I go back to what you just said. He is the reason they won that Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Had it not been yeah. for obviously his play on the field in the last few plays of that that game, but he also was a motivating factor on the sideline to have his troops go back out there and perform and close the door, close the window, and that is what he is all about. Yeah, I love me some NFL films mm-hmm. catching oh, that yeah. uh, catching mm-hmm. McVay's moment. What more could you want? This is what every kid lives for. Yep. Just so blessed to have seen that in real time. But the fact that this guy did this for 10 years, consistently made 10, he was an all pro multiple times, three time defensive player of the year. He was a pro bowler all 10 years. It's just an incredible career. And to steal the quote from Les Steed and Sean McVay, he's one of one. one of one. There's no replacing him. And I kind of say, here's something interesting for a player like yourself. He came out in his interview with his wife, which is very special. I recommend everybody watch it. And he said, look, I can't say I'm the GOAT of all time. You simply can't compare Mm -hmm. generations. The game's changed too much. But he said, but I'm the GOAT of my generation. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) And and you know what he is? He is. He knew he was at the top. I mean, there was nobody else that came up that played the game the way he played it with the skill set that he had. Outstanding. So I commend him. Uh, really I'm excited because I have a connection with him being a former Ram as well. And so you always want to recognize those players before and after you that come along to make a difference in the game. We got to get AD on this show somehow. <laughs> oh, we, we don't know how we got to get AD on here. Um, that, that's a very good point. Uh, just an incredibly special career. Uh, let me ask you this. when Looking at the Rams, for Rams fans now, because let's face it, I've spent the last week watching his highlights, mm-hmm. including being blocked by four or five offensive linemen consistently. Insane. I've never seen another player, even Reggie White, yeah. uh, command that kind of attention ever in my lifetime. But what what's the bigger loss here as a former player? Is it his play on the field or is Aaron Donald of the locker room? What's been your experience when you lose that kind of dynamic on a team? Well, a man like Aaron Donald is no different on the field, off the field, in the locker room, in the meeting rooms. He's the same individual that you're going to um, defend. You're going to also depend on. You're going to also be encouraged by. So he is a special entity. And that kind of goat entity, I'll say, doesn't change because his dynamics carry him wherever he goes. And so that's why he's so special. That's why he's separate. I like my phrase, separate yourself from others. That's how he separates automatically from everybody else. His demeanor never changes. He's intense. 
Um, and he's a great person. Um, he's very communicative and he's someone that's very engaging. Whatever he wants to do after this, Stacy, he can do because yeah. he's just that kind of a makeup that will just excite everything around him. Just glad yeah. he was a part of the Rams dynasty. Oh man, that's easily my favorite player uh, in modern times. And mm -hmm. just uh, look, as a Rams fan, lifelong Rams fans are in that we're in mourning. I mean, we feel very <laughs> lucky to have watched this guy. But wow, are the Rams going to look different next right. year? And that impact he had on the young guys, uh, you got to be watching for that with a Kobe Turner or some of the other young guys on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. Incredibly special, man. Incredibly special. There's talk that Aaron is going to uh, possibly consider an acting career. I mean, yeah, is this, this Jim Brown you know. light? Or we're going to yeah. like uh, get into some of these? <laughs> He'd be great. You know, he's got enough money time and intelligence to decide what he wants to do. And he's got the skill set and the mindset to pursue and accomplish and tackle another industry. I mean, he's, he's got the personality for it. So, but don't oh, plan yeah. to be a seven foot tall guy or a six foot and a half guy. You know, he is what he is, but he certainly can be whatever he chooses to be. I just think he has that kind of dynamic about him. He has that kind of skill set when it comes to applying himself. Uh, he's just a special person to be around. And, and to have the experience as a teammate, not myself, but for those guys that did play with him, to have that experience to be around him and to be cultivated by his um, um, what he gives off, uh, it's, it's just an exciting time for someone to cherish from that time on. So, you know, I, I really do commend him. He played the game the way it was supposed to play. You don't know anything ugly about him, which means he was driven to be the best person he possibly could be. Yeah, that's really special, definite role model, mm -hmm. all that he's done. I got to tell you, and this is a serious question for someone like you, are the are the Los Angeles Rams becoming defensive linemen you? I mean, We've got Rosie and Merlin and Deacon and Jack and Fred and Aaron Donald and I, I mean, keep going. <laughs> I mean, the the Rams are are starting to become you know a real defensive line franchise. Yeah, they've had well, you some know, of the best. Yeah, we've had the years of um, multiple outstanding defensive linemen, whether they were ends or tackles. Um, you know, it's a strange thing to have a true nose uh, guy in the NFL. But if we had one, we probably had a couple of guys. You remember Greg Meisner? He oh, of course. He would have fit. He would have fit ideally as that nose guard, which he did kind of line up a little bit head up on the center and off shoulder. But you know, guys like that, we did have some guys come through that weren't uh, did accomplish the greatest of of all, like the Aaron Donalds and the Young Blood right. and so on and so on. But still. Yes, you probably could call the LA Rams, you know, D line you. <laughs> and and but they have you can also offense too now. Yeah, they have wonderful offensive linemen over the years. I mean, you're absolutely right. You could go offensive lineman. You you could go wide receiver. You oh, I, not a reach, folks. I mean, not a reach. We've had Isaac Bruce, Tory Holt, your whole class, Henry Yeller. I mean. Do I need to keep Cooper Cup now? And, uh, you know, Puka is putting himself in that yeah. combo. Yeah. Incredible. Then you could go running backs. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Rams, one of the most iconic franchises, and what a special time. And mm -hmm. big, big, big congratulations and thanks from this fan for Aaron Donald and all he's done. Yes, yes. Going to miss him big time on Sunday. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron for all those great memories and we have something that we can brag about you know and 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 just follow a wonderful man and and uh you know I know he's a great great man great husband great uh father and so uh, we wish him all the luck in the world absolutely please stay around the franchise we'd like to see I think there'll be a statue in front of SoFi there's gonna be a statue of him you know ring me oh yeah yeah let's do it well, we need to get him on our show. So that's my goal. Yes. Okay. Preston yeah. Denard in the fraternity. I love it. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, let's move along to free agency. We Ooh. are coming out of free agency frenzy. It has been breakneck pace yeah. over the last week, week and a half or so. 
uh, some big names going to some much different places. But I'm really curious as I watch this whole thing unfold, you and I were talking offline, I, free agency, how much has that changed just watching the insanity and including some of the numbers oh. being thrown around? I mean, you're, yeah, you're cringing right now. Like I was born in the wrong era. I mean, we got wide receivers getting 20, $30 million deals, uh, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Uh, what? Like, how is free? What are you thinking when you look at you and your peer group? What are you looking at? Free the agency theme, and thinking. Stacy, the theme this <laughs> season, off season, is these shoes were made for walking. Oh, my. You're going to walk all over you. I uh, mean, everybody, they're just all over the place. Cleats are showing up anywhere they want to be. Okay. It doesn't matter anymore. You know, it just, uh, we're going to show. Nobody actually has, it didn't appear there's a game plan. There didn't appear to be any kind of sanity in this free agent market. It's the bottom line is the most money. Who can show me the most money? Yeah. It doesn't matter about what I'm trying to accomplish here. You know, teams are not chasing guys anymore. They're not trying to keep guys. You know, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. All you did is shift it certain responsibilities and characteristics to another team who has to embrace what they get. And they just ship somebody out that represents the same scenario that they just received. I don't understand all that, but I can tell you this, the win-win is going to be the Steelers. That's Ooh. my take on this whole. Okay. It's going to be the Steelers because not always do we get it right with a draft pick, sometimes we miss out on that draft pick, okay? And then you got a, a, a guy that should have been a draft pick ends up being a free agent. He goes to the team that ends up designing and making him, and he ends up being a star or the new birth of that particular position for that club. And he didn't get drafted, right? Well, you look at the other teams where you get drafted, and you're not happy about play or they shipped out a quarterback somebody's gone you tell me was there truly truly an advantage other than money where Tyreek took off and went to Miami Oof. he wasn't tick off to with anybody he wasn't upset with his quarterback because he had the best one in the game it wasn't that they weren't winning I had to go chase the money yeah what is the value of moving around like they are doing now because all I see is I have a receiver. He's a top receiver. He took off and went elsewhere for money. Oh, I got your receiver coming in here. I just switch roles, switch positions, switch jersey numbers. I don't see a rhyme to reason to free agency this off season. Yeah, I mean, they're, look, follow what it is. You nailed it. They're chasing the bag. I mean, Tyree Kill's a great example. That the Chiefs just won a Super Bowl without him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so he's got more money. And that's great. Look, yep. we, we talk about that on this show in terms of your future and whatnot, but this is insane. I mean, I, there was, I, I love your take, by the way, in the Steelers. They stole Russell Wilson. Look, mm. people were so down on him in Denver. You look at his numbers last year. He was top 10 in passing. Mm. I know that his personality is what seems to rub people the wrong way sometimes, but mm. the Steelers got him for nothing. Yeah. And then they go out and get Justin Fields, their quarterback of the future, if they decide. I mean, they play the Ravens. Mm -hmm. They're looking at Lamar Jackson going, he's a problem. Uh, <laughs> and Justin Fields was every bit Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the Steelers. What are they, I think it's an under-the-radar move. I agree with you. Yeah. You think about it. You get Justin Fields from Chicago, still a young, very talented quarterback. It didn't make sense to be in Chicago. Heck, it could have been the daggone offensive scheme he was in, but he was an athlete in that. But now you get him behind Russell Wilson. And <sighs> what's smart about Tomlins is he strategized that move. Yeah. He knows Russell Wilson is, is on the way out. But what a great mindset and an equal like bodied athlete with the same kind of skill set to bring in Justin Fields, to buy him another year and to put him in that, <laughs> that golden black. Let me tell you, it's going to be a totally different team the way they play and look next year. Agree. And I mean, they can mix. I think people are forgetting they can mix the two in together. 
Yep. There are teams that do that. The Saints yep. did it with Derek Carr and uh, uh, Taysom Hill, you know, guys mm-hmm. with quarterbacks. Get, this could get real interesting, and they paid nothing for either right. of them. Exactly. It's like a million-dollar base contract for Russell Wilson. Works, doesn't work. Who cares? Exactly. And Justin Fields, a sixth-round draft pick? Yeah. I mean, hey, look, look oh. how smart the opportunity is now. Yeah. Should the Steelers Nuts. want to really mess this whole thing up, draft a quarterback. Draft yeah. a quarterback first round and then negotiate those other two additional defensive uh, players you need. And yeah. I mean, that's the way I see the Steelers operating now. They're in the driver's seat. Yeah. And they got some great transitions this offseason so far. They're really improving their game. Everybody else is making moves, but I don't see where. You know, maybe Calvin Ridley might be the difference from yeah. where he moved on. That might be the missing link. But I don't think everybody is benefiting in these moves and trades that are hopping all over the place. Look at the running back. No. How yeah. does Pollard leave Dallas? Why? Uh, the money. It's like he's chasing the bag. I will say the Derrick Henry move to the Ravens is intriguing. I mean, the Steelers and Ravens might be really can't miss football next year. It sure is. When they go head to head, that's going to be a lot of fun, but you're right. I mean, look at the Raiders picking up Christian Wilkins and paying him 110 million. I believe what I mean, (laughs) great player. We're not, we're not arguing that Christian Wilkins is a very good, valuable player. Yes, he is. But they paid him. They broke the bank to get him and team him with Max Crosby. I get it. Mm-hmm. But, my God, why do these – you know, you hear the term thrown around a lot at other media places, the, these poverty franchises. Like, these franchises who haven't won anything in decades, why do they keep making these moves? <laughs> it's still the bottom line. Who's coming through the, the – the, the the ticket box who's 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 all going to be showing up how many folks can i squeeze in these seats how many <laughs> how many more tickets can i raise prices what on? It is. can we get the tv contracts to help us out with this move you know we can spread this money up a little bit and maybe pay a little bit now let's see if it pays off immediately but we haven't even had a draft with all this this is the most activity i've seen in an off season in a, quite a long time Absolutely nuts. Oh, I mean, very, it's, very it's, nuts. it's been a while. I agree with you. Uh, what do you make of the San Francisco 49ers? After losing this Super Bowl, then they cut Eric Armstead. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lose Chase Young, who, to me, I'm not concerned with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have rather they kept him as a Rams fan. Um, but their defensive line is going to look a lot different all of a sudden. Very much so. And you've got another year uh, of people aging. What do you make of the San Francisco 49ers who have not really made a big splash in free agency coming within literally seconds of winning the Super Bowl? They are ha- they've had a very successful last two, three years. They've been very competitive and they're very talented. What I see is now turning to a youthful movement with them because they've been at the mountaintop and now they've got enough talent that they can fight in that Western division. I still think they can be in the, be one of the top two in the Western division, but the challenge they're having is they made that move with Eric. They make the move and, and then chase is gone. Now they're going to turn to the draft. They didn't make the moves in the free agency that, everybody else is making, they're now going to build from within. They're going to use the draft defensively to focus on the defensive personnel to bridge what they lost, but also have youthfulness and talented youthful players that they can grow now and have a more energetic defense and maybe even a faster youthful defense that now they can continue to compete And if they get the right players in there, they can then challenge for playoff opportunity and then go from there. Because offensively, they're good. Offensively, you know, they may be able to use, um, you know, if they can stay healthy at the running back position, they might be able to use a running back here down the road. But defense is where they need to focus on. And I think that's the reason for a lot of their personality right now. Yeah. How big 
in your mind is that Trey Lance draft pick. Giving up all those firsts now where they could have guys on rookie contracts for a kid that doesn't even play on their team anymore. I mean, that has to go I, down as one of the biggest blunders in their franchise history. I think history. so. I, I mean, think so. That, um, you know, I still – that's a tough one to call because, first of all, all this dynamic doesn't happen if he doesn't get hurt. And he continues to blossom yeah, as that talented yeah. athlete. I don't think he's a, a hit and miss. I just don't think everything worked out timely enough. And, uh, they, you know, the 49ers were in a position where they had to they had to continue their flow that they were on. So Trey gets hurt. Trey goes down. He can't continue. He comes back. And unfortunately for him, then you got another youthful, talented, <laughs> drafted quarterback who steps up and performs in Purdy. And then you got yeah. Garoppolo. You got to do something with him. He goes off. Here's where we are now. You have the reality of that move. And Trey Lance, I believe he's sitting pretty because he's in a great place. He's going to continue to develop. He's going to grow. He's being preserved. He's not getting banged up, beat up, and all of that. I think he's going to turn out to be the quarterback you're looking for. Now, is it with the Cowboys? We'll wait and see because how are they going to treat old Dak? Well, they're going to have to treat him because they're giving him money. Right, yeah. <laughs> so they got to stick with him. or <laughs> yeah. not. But yeah. Trey's in a very special place now. Do we look back and say, okay, on behalf of the 49ers, that was a a screwed up deal where they eh, they came out of this pretty sweet. Now they got some draft picks out of this deal. They can make some things work. So I think the 49ers are sitting pretty. That's why they're going to go build that defense. Trey Lance. Good luck. I think he's still a quality quarterback. I think he's going to have his day, and people will get to see the kid that they thought they were drafting in San Francisco. He just got cut short because of injury. Wasn't his play. You know, he tried to come back. Wasn't his play. They had to ship him on because they had a hot vehicle going right then, and I yeah. understand that. Yeah. Not only was Brock pretty better, he's also on a rookie contract. That doesn't hurt. Yep. Yep. When you're Mr. Irrelevant, they're not paying him a lot of money. Uh, a lot it'll of money. be interesting. A lot of reports out of Dallas right now are that the Cowboys front office are very nervous about paying Dak. And, of course, now he has this lawsuit with a woman thing. I'm yep. not even going to get into it. So maybe Trey Lance is waiting in the wings. You might be right. All right. along, suddenly he's the face of the Dallas Cowboys in the I like future. It. I like yeah. it. I, oh, I think okay. he's going he's gonna to be something in this league soon. Ah, okay. You heard it here first from Preston Denard. Okay. As we wrap up this week, March Madness, who do you uh, like in our closing minutes? Who do you like here at this point, you, at the time of this recording? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I, I, I know there's some talented teams out there. I love the Purdue's. I love the Connecticut's. I, I love all of them, right? Michigan State is a fighter in this field. I, I, you just know they stumble along the way. They get tough, and all of a sudden they get to the playoffs, and they become a contender. They're going to mess around and be in there. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm loving me some James Madison. I'm loving oh. me some Grand Canyon. These are, oh, my goodness. Underdogs. What, oh, the underdogs. I'm always for the underdogs. And 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 on top of that, you know, Arizona just won. But, you know, Nevada's trying to hang in there. But, you, you, you know, Dayton took them. But I just think you're going to have some great, great play this next round, especially later today. But I love some Grand Canyon. Oh, my gosh. They okay. Play some ball. So there's some good play out there. There's some great talent. You know, the Arizonas are rolling. Love Oregon's. But, man, there's some great team. And look at you. you got to love that, right? That's yeah. what athletics is all about. That's what it's all about. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a special time of year every year. Kind of pulling for those Ivy League guys. Yeah. Kind of pulling for them. So, good stuff. Well, thank stuff. you, my friend. Mark yeah. Bendis is here. Going back to it. Yep. <laughs> it was, time, to get back, time to get back to the flat screens. Thanks for joining us this week. On Gridiron Icon, any parting shots, my friend? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Basketball's in the flare. <laughs> Watch out for Duquesne, baby. Oh. Illinois. <laughs> Illinois is talented, but Duquesne, baby. <laughs> and now he goes Duquesne. This is like a, a moving target with the underdogs. Okay. <laughs>
Enjoy. Oh, all right, folks, check us out. We appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff on all the usual spots. Until next week, for Preston Dernard and myself, thanks for joining us on Gridiron Icon. We will see you soon.